Apparently the Koreans are playing Kale and Nocturne in the bottom lane now. I actually think I'm a little lost at this point. What's up summoners, my name is Irene and I'm here to bring you another episode of our Sleeper OP builds. Like always, I'm going to run you through OP builds of all five roles, so make sure to stay tuned. We've got some exciting ones for you guys this time around and I can't wait to talk to you guys about them. By the way, I wanna let you guys know that we're doing a giveaway for seven annual Pro Guide subscriptions and a ton of Pro Guide points. To have a chance at winning this prize, all you need to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel and head over to our giveaway section in our Discord. It actually just takes a few clicks and then you are all set. For our question of the day, what steps do you take before starting your league games? Personally, I like to hop onto the training tool and farm for a couple of minutes to get warmed up. Let me know what your answers are in the comments below. I'd love to read through them. With that said though, let's jump into the video. Beginning with the top lane, we've actually got a throwback build. Tank Galio is making a comeback. This is definitely a build players aren't really used to seeing anymore. Instead, Galio is someone that we typically expect to build a ton of AP nowadays. While squishier, AP Galio has proven to be extremely effective, and it's been a while since we saw players build him as a tank. However, with all the hype around Nimbus Cloak and how well it synergizes with him, it seems like players overlooked this build. Galio can be played as a tank, and with this build, you'll still retain the necessary mobility to hunt down opponents and lock them down. For runes, you run Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm with Second Wind and Overgrowth. If you run Gathering Storm and Overgrowth, you'll add a decent amount of scaling to your mid and late game. Tank Galio with Gathering Storm can still pack a punch when games go a bit longer than expected. His AP ratios are very high and they don't change just because you're playing him as a tank. For items, build an Abyssal Mask, Ninja Tabi, Frozen Heart, Dead Man's Plate, Gargoyle's Stone Plate, and a Thorn Nail. With Abyssal Mask, Frozen Heart, and the Transcendence Mastery, you're still able to cap out at 40% CDR, which allows you to maximize your crowd control and cycle through spells repeatedly. If you find that applying Grievous Wounds with Thornmail isn't practical for one of your games, you can instead replace it with a Morello Nomicon. A second top lane build we've seen floating around is Omni Stone Udyr in the top lane. This is definitely an off-meta build, but it actually seems pretty promising. Udyr can use a variety of keystones, and Omnistone provides access to multiple over the course of extended trades. Ones like Aftershock, Press the Attack, and Conqueror provide extra combat power, while Rolling Predator encourages players to roam mid and try to impact the rest of the map. This build is a tank build centered around Udyr's Turtle Stance, thus you'll be maxing his W first. Turtle Stance proves to be a pretty powerful tool during the laning phase. It ensures that Udyr can safely farm, but it also acts as an excellent trading tool. This shield is on a pretty short cooldown and Udyr is able to use it basically every trade because of this. Against opponents that want to poke him, Udyr instead can use Turtle Stance to secure farm. One feature of Turtle Stance is that it allows players to heal for a certain amount of missing health once they basic attack enough times. Even if you take some damage while trading, you can slowly heal back up and drive your opponents insane. For runes, take Omni Stone, Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, and Time Warp Tonic, with Second Wind and Overgrowth in your secondary. For items, build a Frozen Heart, Ninja Tabi, Spirit Visage, Thorn Mail, Dead Man's Plate, and a Wit's End. All right, that covers our top lane builds, so make sure to take another look at the screen because we put them up one last time for you guys. Next up is the jungle. Our first jungle build this patch is Taric Jungle. While Taric Jungle has been slowly gaining popularity, it's far from mainstream. Taric Jungle packs a surprising punch as he's actually a very powerful duelist. The biggest reason for this is his passive. Whenever Taric casts a spell, his next two basic attacks deal bonus damage and reduce the cooldown of his basic abilities by a full second. This allows him to run through loops of his Q, cycling healing and bonus damage. If attached to an ally, Taric will heal himself as well as them. This proves incredibly useful during 2v2s as well as 3v3 scenarios, making Taric an extremely powerful counter ganker as well. And Taric's ganks actually aren't that bad either. If he builds Chilling Smite, he's able to steal movement speed and follow this up with his own stun. After level 6, he's able to use his ultimate to enable otherwise risky dives. Taric Jungle has a lot of potential and players are definitely sleeping on him. For runes, take Press the Attack, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, and then Magical Footwear and Biscuit Delivery. Taric gains an insane amount of attack speed from his passive. This allows you to use Press the Attack effectively and thus increases his teammate's damage output as well. For items, you're going to want to build a Cinder Hulk, Ninja Tabi, Thorn Mail, Spirit Visage, Knight's Vow, and a Locket of the Iron Solari. 
Our next jungle build is for Volibear, but this one focuses more on utility than raw damage output. This stems mostly from the items he builds. You'll want to pick up a Zeke's Convergence as well as a Thornmail later down the line. Zeke's Convergence is a powerful item, but it depends heavily on what situation its holders find themselves in. A champion like Volibear is a great champion to use this item on because of the way his ultimate is used. When you cast Volibear's ultimate, it's go time, and your whole team is looking to dive the enemy team. Some champions use their ultimates reactively and thus might activate Zeke's at suboptimal times. Picking up Thornmail later into the game gives you a way to apply Grievous Wounds to enemies and further support your allies. For runes, you'll run Press the Attack, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Nimbus Cloak, and Water Walking. For items, you'll build a Cinder Hulk, Mercury Treads, Righteous Glory, Zeke's Convergence, Gargoyle Stoneplate, and a Thorn Mail. That covers our jungle builds for this patch, so let's hop into the mid lane next. Take a look at the screen one more time though, because we have those builds up for you guys. The first mid lane build we want to talk about is Spellbook Aurelian Soul. Access to multiple summoner spells is great to have on him. Having access to Summoner Ghost is extremely powerful considering the buffs that it did receive, while other options like Barrier, Exhaust, and Teleport are excellent, versatile ones. While you do give up some of your damage or extra mobility, you're going to be a little bit safer with Unsealed Spellbook because you'll have access to defensive summoner spells. Aurelian Soul already deals plenty of damage and pushes in waves quickly, so he doesn't rely on a keystone to cover the essentials. When playing him, make sure to go for the typical Corrupting Potion start followed by an early Dark Seal purchase. You'll need this for a strong early game start to gain lane priority and also have some more sustain to work with. For runes, take Unsealed Spellbook, Perfect Timing, Minion Dematerializer, Time Warp Tonic, Nimbus Cloak, and Transcendence. Perfect Timing can come in clutch during the mid game. The stopwatch you receive is easily one of the most valuable items you can get, and with this rune, it comes for free. You get one free usage of a stasis before you finish a Zonia's Hourglass, which can definitely be more than enough as long as you choose a decent time to activate it. Minion Dematerializer is a must so that you can push in waves and roam. For items, take Rod of Ages, Mercury Treads, Zonia's Hourglass, Leandri's Torment, Rabidon's Death Cap, and finally, a Void Staff. And here is yet another old build we see returning, and it's Lulu Mid. She provides a mix of damage as well as utility. Lulu Mid is a strong lane bully that scales well, and as one of the most sought after supports in the game, why not just throw her in the mid lane as well? She has access to more gold more quickly, so Lulu Mid can protect her allies better than support Lulu can. Also, Lulu Mid acts as a secondary damage threat as she does build a little bit of ability power. First up, let's run through Lulu's runes. You're going to want to take Summon Airy with Nullifying Orb, Transcendence, Scorch, and then Minion Dematerializer and Time Warp Tonic. While it is a player preference thing, taking Scorch on Lulu mid is actually pretty strong. Lulu's range is solid and her short, bursty trades are extremely annoying to deal with. Slapping a Scorch on top of this really makes Lulu's opponents feel the burn. Some extra damage in the early game allows Lulu to push opponents out of the lane with ease and create leads for herself. As for the items, you'll build Athene's Unholy Grail, Hextech GLP, Boots of Swiftness, Ardent Sensor, Redemption, and a Magi Soul Stealer. Boots of Swiftness provides a ton of bonus movement speed, which is actually perfect for Lulu, because she wants to continuously reposition throughout fights so that she doesn't randomly die. But also, buffing her allies as well as debuffing her enemies means she has to go between being in range of enemies to only being in range of allies. We've seen Pike mid before, but now we're seeing it with a new item, Death's Dance. Pike mid is doing the same stuff as before, but he's so much harder to take out now because of Death's Dance. Pike can't build HP and any health he builds is converted into attack damage. So the only way for Pike to get tankier is by building resistances. Death's Dance provides both of these and also allows him to try and sustain his way through entire fights. Since Death's Dance allows its user to heal off of any damage that they deal, Pike can get some massive heals off with his ultimate as well. Don't underestimate this build as it's extremely oppressive to play against when Pike is fed. For the runes, you'll run Hail of Blades, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, and then Second Wind with Unflinching. Unflinching is actually pretty underrated, but extremely powerful. You get free tenacity from it, and when used alongside Mercury Treads, Pike basically becomes impossible to catch. With that much tenacity, Pike is basically able to break out of any crowd control that hits him and proceed to dash away. For items, build a Tiamat, Yomu's Ghostblade, Mercury Treads, Duskblade of Drakthar, Death Stance, and Guardian Angel. Once you've finished all your items, upgrade Tiamat into a Titanic Hydra for some more damage and another auto attack reset. That's a wrap for the mid lane. Check out the screen once again for those builds. Next up, let's run through the bottom lane. 
All right, so this first bot lane build is actually pretty wild. We've got a new duo lane that we recently saw Chovy and Doran from the LCK pull out from out of nowhere. While it might have succeeded because of their own mechanical prowess rather than the build being good, it doesn't change the combo potential this bottom lane has. The main goal of this duo lane is to stack a Kale ultimate on top of a Nocturne ultimate that's going into the backline. Nocturne will throw out his entire combo in an attempt to burst down an enemy, while Kale ultimate will give opponents little room to stop him. The Kale ultimate also deals a decent amount of damage, meaning that opponents have no choice but to try and flee from the Nocturne ultimate. One at a time, we'll run through the champion builds. For Kale, run Guardian, Demolish, Bone Plating, Revitalize, and then Monoflow Band and Transcendence for your runes. As for the items, build Shard of True Ice, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Athene's Unholy Grail, Ardent Sensor, Redemption, and Locket of the Iron Solari. Nocturne's runes are Electrocute, Taste of Blood, Ghost Poro, Ultimate Hunter, and then you'll run Magical Footwear and Biscuit Delivery. His items are Yomu's Ghost Blade, Tiamat, Duskblade of Drakthar, Boots of Swiftness, Edge of Night, and Lord Dominic's Regards. This build focuses on burst damage, therefore you want to run Electrocute over Lethal Tempo. A second bottom lane duo we want to mention is Zed and Yumi. This is yet another chaotic bot lane duo, but they've got a different plan. You're basically playing Zed, but stronger, since he's going to have a pesky little cat joining him for his escapades. While the very early game for this duo can be rather weak, it quickly ramps up as he gains levels. Especially after level 6, this duo proves to be extremely difficult to deal with. As if dealing with Zed ultimate wasn't hard enough, you've also got to deal with Yumi's ultimate stacked on top of it. Any champion that Yumi attaches to gets stronger, she grants them adaptive force, and also provides them a ton of utility. There's basically no running away from the Zed and Yumi combo. She increases his movement speed and can also send out a slow to help Zed make picks on enemies. First up, let's run through Yumi's setup. Take Summon Airy, Monoflow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight for your runes. While building a Shard of True Ice, Mikhail's Crucible, Athene's Unholy Grail, Magi's Soul Stealer, Shirelia's Reverie, and Redemption for your items. On Zed's end, you'll want to run Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Transcendence, Scorch, and then Presence of Mind with Legend Tenacity. Alternatively, you can run a normal Electrocute setup if you prefer the damage instead. For items, build Yomu's Ghostblade, Dustblade of Drakthar, Boots of Mobility, Edge of Night, Umbral Glaive, and Lord Dominic's Regards. That covers our bot lane section, so once again, take a look at your screen for a recap of those builds. Now with that said, let's transition into supports next. For supports, we're going to talk about Phase Rush Bard. First things first, we need to answer the question you guys are asking already. How well does Bard activate Phase Rush? The answer to that is actually really well. Bard's passive counts towards the three hit counter on Phase Rush. This means you can either basic attack enemies twice, as long as you have your passive ready, or hit them with the same empowered auto attack along with a Q. With just two hits, you're able to activate Phase Rush to either chase your enemies down or book it so that your enemies can't hit you back. Eventually, following some hit and run trades, your opponents will be low enough so that you can instead use your Phase Rush movement speed to aggressively chase them. In the mid to late game, Phase Rush makes Bard extremely slippery, meaning that his opponents have an even harder time trying to catch up to him and pick him off. Nothing is more annoying than a support who doesn't die. Take Yumi and her through the roof ban rate as an example. For the runes, take Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Water Walking, and then Zombie Ward with Relentless Hunter. Next, make sure to pick up a Shard of True Ice, Boots of Swiftness, Hextech Proto Belt, Athene's Unholy Grail, Redemption, and Locket of the Iron Solari for his items. The item build is a little bit more vanilla as you're still building some utility items. The Hextech Proto Belt Rush is actually pretty nice and especially for those early power spikes that you hit with it. Kindle Gem is a solid cheap purchase that provides a sizable health boost as well as cooldown reduction and Hextech Revolver provides a power spike during the laning phase that adds onto Bard's already high damage output. All right, that's going to wrap up our support section, so make sure to take one last look at the screen for a recap of those builds. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure you check out ProGuides.com as well as our YouTube channel for even more informational content just like this. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and like this video so that you can stay updated with any new content that we release. Until next time, best of luck on the Rift, Summoners.